What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Against All Odds podcast, season three. This is going to be the very first episode of season three. And so for season three, uh, what we're going to do is just kind of sit down with a lot of the Roughnecks players from Tulsa and just kind of make it all about their stories and everything. So the first guest is, is Mr. DJ Dean. My real name is actually Dominique, so I don't know if you knew that already. I actually didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, my full name is Dominique Hedemias. So that's what DJ stands for. But, uh, yeah. And you're from Guatemala, right? That's no, 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 no. My family's from Guatemala. I'm from here. So I was born and raised Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, my mom's from actually from California. She's from Los Angeles. And then my grandma and my uncle, a lot of my uncles are from Guatemala. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, have you been to Los Angeles? Uh, yeah, I have a few times, actually. Have you been uh, down to San Diego? Uh, no, I have not been to San Diego. San Diego is just the better version of Los Angeles. Really? Yeah. yeah. And I have a lot of family in Los Angeles, so I go down there about every other summer. So, Or not Same. summer, every other off-season. That's good. Yeah. You went to Guatemala uh, this last off-season, yeah? Last off-season, yeah. It was, I went down there for half, you know, business, half, you know, family. So mm-hmm. I was trying to get on the national team down there, but that didn't work out. You know, it was, it was kind of corrupt because right now the Watermelon Watermelon Federation is kind of corrupt. The right Watermelon now. Federation. The watermelon <laughs> watermelon <laughs> Federation is kind of corrupt right now. So yeah. that didn't really work out. But uh, saw a lot of family down there. It's a beautiful country. I love going down there. So That's sick. All right. So you're one of the, you're the youngest guy I on the team. I am the youngest. Yeah. So DJ is the youngest guy on the team. Maybe I should do that. I'll just start from the youngest and work all the way up to like yeah. sip. But you're 20 years old, huh? 20. I'll be 21 this year. And you signed your first pro contract with Tulsa last year. Yeah, I was 19 when I signed my first contract. I joined. Actually, I went to preseason with them. So that's all. That's we'll get into that later. Yeah. After, so that's okay. But that's sick. Like most people don't do that in like America. Like uh-huh. go pro from from straight like that. Yeah. But um, we'll, we'll start all the way from. From back, so you were born in Tulsa, you said, born right? Born in Tulsa, born in Tulsa. Um, and then you just basically did youth academy stuff all growing up. Uh, yeah, huh? club, club, high school. I did went the usual route, you know. I uh, wasn't on varsity my freshman year. Didn't get to varsity so my sophomore year. Uh, sophomore year, that's what. That's the year, you know. I really, you know, decided I wanted. Like that's when it clicked for me. Sophomore and, year. Yeah, that's when I wanted to play pro. You know. I think that that's when I started watching your videos, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I, I don't know if you guys, like, it, funny story, which I'll, I'll start right here with. But when I came to Tulsa Roughnecks in mm-hmm. September, I came here and I was, like, meeting everybody. And then you were the first person I just started passing with. And I was like, as the very first training, I'm like, yeah, I'm Matt. And you're like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, this guy doesn't think I'm like, like, I thought you didn't like like me. Like, you had some beef with me because you were just like, yeah, I know. No, nah, I was secretly, <laughs> you know, freaking out inside because I knew it was like, dude, I'm sitting next to this dude. I'm like, I've watched this dude forever. And like to be passing with you, you know, it was crazy. It's it was so it was funny. so real at first. Like, no, I'm just like I know you. I'm just now like, you're like oh, whatever. This yeah, guy this sucks. dude sucks. Yeah. I <laughs> know. Right, so let's go back. Okay. So you're doing youth academy stuff, or not youth academy? You're just playing in Tulsa mm-hmm. as a kid up as until sophomore. Did you do like were you national team? Were you ODP? Were you academy teams or anything? See that I did. I was gonna do a ca- I was gonna do ODP actually, and I went to one of the training sessions they had in Tulsa. And the guy, I just never followed through with it, basically. A lot of my friends actually did ODP. They made region team, a lot of my friends, you know. But you know, the thing I did, I think it was my junior year, beginning of my junior year, I tried out for uh, Sporting Academy. And I went mm-hmm. there, tried out there, and made it. But I joined, like, right when the season began or, like, was in full, you know, swing. Yeah. And so they didn't have any more host families for me, and so I couldn't, you know, I couldn't move down there and financially my mom you know it's just me my mom and my sister so i'm not gonna make my mom pay for a full apartment by herself yeah so that didn't work out so i just finished out my high school career after that but yeah i feel like you know you know that's i feel like that's important as a player to you know go in academies try out academies Mm -hmm. but uh you know academy when i went there it was like pro like it was like it feels like it was like here like, you know, people... Super pro, like so professional? Super professional. I've never been in an environment like that. And to see an environment like that was was pretty cool. And I wish, you know, that's one of the things I wish I would have done was an academy. But, you know, some things don't work out, so... What club were you playing with in Tulsa? Uh, literally, I've played at every club in Tulsa. I've played in every every club. So, uh, we have Her- TSC Hurricane. We have Blitz. Uh, we have WSA. And then a couple old clubs that dissolved back then, but... Uh, my senior year, se- junior, senior, and sophomore year, 
I was at WSA. Okay, and that's yeah, that's like the big. Isn't that the big? Uh, one? Actually, TSC is the big club. TSC is the big one. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then so sophomore year, year, you said like everything started clicking, right? Uh, so sophomore year, I remember the exact day actually. The exact uh, day. The exact that, day I wanted to go pro. Like, oh, let's go freshman year. How was your freshman year? Were you like one of the? Were you the best freshman of your uh, high school? Yeah, I, I, mean, I thought so. Someone's gonna call me and be like, "No, nah, you're not." The best. <laughs> like, I mean, I got told, you know, I should have been on varsity, but I'm pretty yeah. sure the, the the high school, you know, high school coaches are their, you know, favorites. It's 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 all, you know, yeah, stupid. But do you think it was better to be on JV your freshman year though, because you got more playing time or like? Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, it was fun. I thought it was fun. You yeah. know, high school years, you know, it's, it's supposed to be fun. So I thought it was enjoyable. And then so sophomore year, what was the exact day that everything clicked? Uh. I texted, I remember, it was raining. I remember everything, dude, I'm telling you. I, it was raining and everything, and I texted my club coach. I was like, you know, I told him I wanted to play professional soccer. That was what I wanted to do. And he sent me this long paragraph back saying, you know, you're gonna, if you want to get to where, you know, you want to be, you're going to have to, you know, train every day, you know, eat right, basically be professional at this age. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember I even texted my mom, like, Mom, can I please be homeschooled so I could just train for, like, <laughs> a new one? Because... I started watching you, and then, uh, what's the dude's name? Train, you know Train Effective? Train Effective, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I started watching his videos, too, and he was saying, you know, the 10,000 rule. Yeah. To not 10,000, to be where you're at. And I, so I was training. I literally trained for, like, from my sophomore year all the way to my senior year. Literally, I think I missed, like, 10 days out of every, like, wow. the three years. I was training every day, at least once an hour, like, and then even with club practice, so. So you were, how often were you training with your club team? Uh, I think train like two or three days a week. And then, so you were doing the rest of it was individual training. Mm-hmm. Huh? Individual training. And it was just, where would you go? Uh, well, I lived in apartments from my sophomore. These one apartments, they had like this field. Yeah. And it had like, and it, was, it was like just a makeshift field, makeshift field. And there was a fence, like a tennis court in the fence. And I would just shoot it against the fence. Like okay. that would be my goal. Yeah. But I would like have cones. I would have like... Uh, one of those, you know, the skills nets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would use one of those, but yeah, I would just, you know, look up drills from either your YouTube or uh, the other dude's YouTube, and mm-hmm. I would just use those, and I would just train every single day. Yes, just by yourself. Just by by myself. And so, what, how how many hours? Like, what was a typical training session last for you? Like, was it an hour? Hour, was it two hour, hours? And a, hour, hour and a half. Yeah. Hour fifteen. Not too long. I feel like I don't know what you think, but like for for me, for individual sessions. Because you, it's just you, and mm-hmm. you get so many reps. Like an hour is like a long time to train for your individual, yeah. don't you think? Yeah. Oh, and yeah. like, if you're going for an hour and a half, two hours, that's that's a long session. That's a long to focus session. Focus on you. That's a very long session. But I mean, yeah, I would just go for like an hour. You know, do a little ball thing, ball mm-hmm. control. Sometimes I'd actually bring my cousin out, and he would, you know, be the goal, not goal, kind of goalie. He doesn't play goal. He doesn't play soccer. But I would tell him to come out here, and you know, <laughs> you just, just pelt balls. Yeah, I just pelt <laughs> ball, and he would help me. You know, he would throw the ball for me. Yeah. So I mean, just stuff like that. That's sick. And what about, um, would you, if you had training, because you said you trained two, three days a week, and you probably had games on the weekends. Mm-hmm. On those days, did you do any individual training, or did you just chill and, and like... Oh, my, like, the training days? Yeah. Oh, uh, no, no, no. I would go home, I would go home, literally, from school. Yeah. I would get home at, like, 3.20, go straight outside, and then go straight to training, or club practice, like, an hour after that. So, I'd go okay. to club practice at, like, 6.30, and I'd get done with my individual training at, like, 5.30, so... So I would have like no rest. So you would have days where you will you'll have like probably playing soccer for four hours. Yes, four hours straight. Yeah. And how was your body during all that? Like, did you have uh, any injuries? Did you get tight? Did you have anything? Any problems? Um, not really. Uh, I remember I rolled my ankle really bad, but that was like in December, like November, going into the you know winter months. So mm-hmm. we would eventually get off, and so that was you know that worked out fine. I came back January, it was fine. So. No, really big. I've never. Thank God, I've never had any like big injuries yeah. ever. Just besides that ankle roll. And then, okay, so you were training a whole bunch on your own. Um, why do you think, like, you said that you had the moment. Was it, you had the moment where it clicked that you wanted to be a pro in mm-hmm. your sophomore year. And you were training on your own all the way up until your senior year mm-hmm. with team trainings, with club and everything. Mm-hmm. How was, were you getting, like, D1 college offers? Were you getting looks into the college game or anything? Or were you completely set on pro? Uh, well, so I wanted, I, I realized, you know, like I remember I was looking up how to go pro like literally on on the internet how to yeah. you know how to be a professional soccer player and you know they said the usual ways to get drafted 
through college. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to have to go to college, you know, to get to where I want to be. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I got offers from a few colleges around here, like TU, ORU, the big ones yeah. here. And then UCA, I got looked at by a couple of schools, you know, around. But uh, ultimately, I committed to University of Central Arkansas. So Okay. And then so how, how did they see, was it for, through a club? Uh, I remember it was my junior year. We played in Bentonville, Arkansas, which is not too far from University of Central Arkansas. We played a high school down there. It was for preseason for my high school. Uh-huh. And one of their uh, coaches came out and saw me play. And he said, you know, he, that's when he approached me. You know, I gave him my email. And we just stayed in contact throughout my senior year. I went to a, a college ID camp for them. Mm-hmm. And that's when they offered me, like, you know. How was the college ID camp? Uh, it was it was cool. There was a couple, you know, academy players, actually, that were there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a different experience, most definitely. It was super cold. Oh, no, actually, it was indoors, so it wasn't that cold. But, <laughs> yeah. It was, it was cold outside, but you were yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah. All right. I remember it being cold, but uh, they, you know, they paid for, uh, what do you call it? A hotel for me and my mom to stay oh, there. Oh, nice. Uh-huh. That's, that's, a, that's a good way to know, like, if, it, if a coach is yeah. like, actually interested in you. So they paid for a hotel. I went to the college. I went to the camp. Did well, actually. Mm-hmm. And, you know... I committed from there. So, so they, they asked you to verbally commit to mm-hmm. come to... Uh, then not that, like, exact weekend, but, after, like, oh, that same exact week, they you know, okay. gave me my offer and whatnot. And then, so, was this at the same time that you were looking at sporting in Kansas City? No, this was, this was my senior year. And that was junior so, year? Yeah. My, yeah, sporting was junior year. Okay, okay, okay. Because uh, I remember, so you DM me, like... Yeah, after, I, I think I DM'd you. You actually came here and you played the athletics. Yeah. That was a while back. That's when you, I think you played for Orange County then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was, yeah, I remember I DM'd you then, and then I DM'd you for uh, the academy, too. Yeah, you know, I remember like, the, for the academy. You know, advice that was on a, that. That was back when I was in Germany, Dude, right? That was a long time yeah. ago. That was back when I was I was answering every single DM, every single email, like everything. Mm-hmm. And then you DM me about the academy, and then I remember I tried to, like, give you my best. But it was hard because I never went yeah. to the academy or anything. Yeah. But, like, I, I tried my best. But that was that was really crazy when you told crazy me that. That's crazy thing about yeah. it, huh? Yeah. And then, um, all right, so, yeah, you did the, the you tried for the academy. You got some colleges. So what went from, okay, I'm going to go to Central Arkansas now. This is your senior year, probably, like, in the winter. Was it when that, when they, when yeah, you were Yeah, going committed? in, because high school run, high school season for, like, soccer runs from January, February. February to about April here. So Oh, so, so it's like a winter sport here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, for me, it was always in the fall. Really? So, yeah, we oh, did. Yeah. We had soccer in the fall, and then because I don't know why actually, but yeah, we did. Um, so like after that, I committed like in February. Oh, okay. To, for UC Davis, no, but yeah, so yeah, you so you verbally place. committed at, in your senior year of your. That's pretty late too. Huh? Yeah, it was late. It was a late commit actually. Dang. So okay, and then so how you obviously didn't go to University of Central Arkansas. No. What happened from the spring of your senior year until? Until I left Arkansas, that's yeah. okay. So that that was probably one of the hardest moments, like you know, hardest moments of my life, just because you know I had it was a decision I made for myself. But mm-hmm. basically, so committed to Arkansas, trained throughout the summer. Uh, preseason started August, and so we reported. No, was it August? Yeah, usually it starts. August. Start, starts about August, so we reported early August. Uh, we had our schedule for preseason. We we're gonna go to Colorado Springs. Mm. scrimmage to D one D one team uh, and then another D two team out there. It was a cool experience. Uh, you know, I got to know my team better, but, uh, so we did that, played both games, did well. Um, and came back and it was moving day actually. So, you know, came back moving day. I just, I woke up that day. My mom, my mom, my grandma, my sister were all there, you know, ready to move me into my dorm. I, I just woke up and I just, you know, I was like, I don't want to, like, I just, I don't want to do this. Like, college is not, college is not for me. Like, I just Damn. woke up. Like, I don't know, like, what, like, enticed me to do that. Uh-huh. But I just, I woke up and I didn't want to be there. Like, I just told my mom, you know, my mom told my co- my club coaches, they were trying to get me to stay. Yeah. It was just, it was hectic, man. And it was, uh, I remember I called my, the, the coach for UCA and I told him, you know, 
what I told him the truth. Like I didn't want. It was nothing against the program, nothing against, nothing against the coach, nothing against the players, nothing against the school. It was just it wasn't for me. And Damn, so I, I, I left. didn't know that at all. No, I left, bro. And you know, obviously it was hard on my mom. I felt you know, like complete shit because like, you know, they did all this to get me here, and yeah. now I'm just gonna you know leave just like that and you just went back home just back back home it was the worst car car ride of my life three hours it was three and a half hours worst. What, was your mom mad or what was she, she was mad pissed everything she was just upset that you threw upset. away that opportunity mm -hmm. and what and so you i, I like i understand because like i feel like a lot of people do that where it's like because college soccer you really are like it's a huge thing being a student you know yeah and going to college but you just woke up and you were like, I don't want to be... Was it the school? You didn't want the school aspect of it? Or, or like... No. It, I, I mean, I, I... You know, I'm not, like, dumb or anything. But, like, I'm, I'm a smart kid. I got, like, a 23 on my ACT. Yeah. And I just... I don't... Like, it wasn't what I wanted... It wasn't what I wanted to do. Like, I just wanted to be a pro. Be a pro so. And were you excited leading up to it? Like, or... Because I felt like, for me, when I was going to UC Davis and... and the lead up to that, I was just so Oh, like excited. going to college? Yeah. yeah, of course. I was pumped. I was like, oh, I kept looking at the schedules, you know, like looking at the players from last year, yeah. trying to get, you know. Slice them up. Yeah. My roommate, you know, he was cool as, cool as hell. So, <laughs> yeah. You know. And, and I, then so, okay, but I'm trying to, I'm, I'm really trying to get into your head on that, that day, that moving day when you woke up. Like why, I know it's hard to answer, but like. Whoa, it was just a gut feeling that you had that you just didn't want that you thought that this wasn't the right path that you were taking yeah that i i don't know i, I can't like tell you what it yeah, was yeah. you know i just woke up wasn't feeling it what? and i was just like oh, you know this is not for me i know where i want to be you know I, I envisioned in my head you know what i wanted to do and that's crazy because uh i told my mom you know i wanted to go to like the, after that after all that I wanted to go to England. I was, I was, my mind was set on going to England, you know, but I had no, I, you know, I had no idea what I was getting myself into, and so you know, I came back, worked from that. So that was, I came back August, and I worked from August all the way to December, just worked and training, gym, mm -hmm. you know. Worked as in like not a job though, like no, no, trained, like, right? Yeah, trained and then worked as like a normal job. Like, What'd you do? Uh, I worked at, I worked at two different places actually. I worked at a cell phone hospital. Okay. It was like a cell phone place. And then I was doing landscaping. Wow. Yeah. And you were, how many hours a day were you working? Like a uh, job? When I was working at cell phone hospital, uh, I was like four or five days a week. Four or five days a week? Mm -hmm. And then how many hours a day? Uh, from 10 to, they opened at 10, they closed at 7. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then you still were able to get in your training yeah. and your workouts yeah. and everything. Mm -hmm. Dang. When you were at that moment and like doing that and you're working a job, and you were training on your own, or mm -hmm. you training with your old club team or something? Or? Uh, yeah, actually, I would go with my old club team, like the an age down, uh -huh. and I would just train with them. You know, the co the coach, thank God, of the one of the club teams was ORU head coach, so he was a decent coach. You know? Okay, yeah. So you know, I could get decent training, but uh, you know, I would train on my own gym. I would actually play Sunday league mm -hmm. or Saturday league, Friday league. We had that year, and I would just you know try to keep in shape. Did you think that you made a mistake? So that yeah, uh, there were times where I was just like, like, what am I doing? Like, yeah. I'm a complete idiot. Why did I leave? But I just I had to, I had to, like it was a decision I made. I can't go back on it. So yeah. I, I couldn't you know dwell on it. Did you follow Central Arkansas's program and like your friends that you made there? Yeah, I, st I follow them to this day. I still, I still and, you and know. You saw them like in preseason. You saw them with the games. You mm -hmm. saw them at at school and like going to classes and like you. Did you, like, feel like you missed out? Like, were you getting, like, FOMO? Uh, not, not really. So that I feel like if you're not getting that, then it wasn't, like, a at that point. Like, for me, that tells me that you made, a, a, honestly, a good decision. If you really weren't missing out on it that much. Yeah, I mean. like that? I, I, the only thing I wish I would have stayed for mm -hmm. was, the, you know, to get the college experience, mm. in my opinion. That, like, that's the only thing I wish I would have stayed for, you know. Yeah. To, ex feel, to experience, you know, what it feels like to be a college student. But, but no. the college so the actual soccer program, you you didn't feel like you missed out. No, I mean they won. They actually won their conference that year for the first time ever. Wow. Yeah, the year I left, and they won it the year after that too. Wow. Yeah, they're yeah. a good team. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then so, 
now you're working. You doing? You said at a cell phone hospital. Cell phone hospital. You're working, doing landscape. You're do like landscaping. You're training on your own. You're training with your club team. You're working out on your own. You're doing all this stuff. Um, how did? What was the next few months after that like? Uh, like that, those few months were the hardest, to be honest. Uh-huh. Just because I had nothing going. Like I felt like I had nothing going for me. Yeah. You know, I was working a normal job. Not you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but like yeah, I was you know doing that. I didn't. I like I threw that, threw away a college. You know, but you're but you're asked. So were you thinking that like I'm gonna go over to England in January for like yeah. that transfer window? So or? I was you know my plan was I saw a couple. I forgot what it was called. It was some like. Uh, combine down there that was you know I was wanting to do so I was gonna save I was gonna work save up money and then I think the combine was in January February mm-hmm. and I was gonna go over there you know do that so that was that was my plan until about December when it's crazy uh it was actually Mike yeah the head coach now at Roughnecks uh he was a match analyst for the Roughnecks that year mm-hmm. it was I want to say 2017, end of 2017. He was match analyst, so he wasn't even like an assistant or anything. I texted him because I knew he sent uh, a player from his club team to England. Mm-hmm. I think it was Sheffield Wednesday for their academy. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, you know, I, I hit him up. I asked him, you know, how does that all work? If you could, you know, send it to me or send me, like, how would that work? And he told me basically, you know, in order to do that, you have to do well in your own market because, you know, I was already like 19. Yeah. So, you know, I, he said to do well in your own market, which was, you know, the Roughnecks. So he told me to go to the Combine for the Roughnecks, which was, which was in December. Okay. And so that worked out. I went I went there. And I'm actually last – the coach, the assistant coach for the Roughnecks that year, 2017, his name is Lloyd. I was good friends with his son. His son was in, like, my fourth hour of my senior year of high school. So okay. I, I was really cool with his son. And so he got me in for free. Like, I didn't have to pay anything mm-hmm. for the Combine. And I did well at the combine, so and then they invited me into preseason, and okay. then this was the twenty eighteen season. This was yeah. So that and you did the combine in twenty seventeen, and then the twenty eighteen season is when okay. I went. So you went into preseason with the Roughnecks, and so this at this point you were thinking that like I need you were all about going to England, mm-hmm. but then talking to like Mike and some older people like mm-hmm. coaches, you were like, oh maybe I like that where you need to do well in your own market. Yeah, because a lot of people I think, especially like younger guys, think that like. Okay, now it's just time to go straight overseas. Mm-hmm. You know, before you've you've gone pro or even done semi pro or something here, and I think it, it always could work. But I, I do like the idea of like you have to do well in your own market. Yeah, in my opinion, hundred percent. If I would have went to England, I wouldn't I wouldn't have been prepared. I don't think I, uh-huh. I don't think I would have been prepared. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, I even found that going over to Germany. Like I had, I don't want to say I did well in my own market, but I played D one four years. Mm-hmm. I did with San Jose Earthquakes D twenty threes. And then I was training with Sacramento Republic and mm-hmm. I went over to Germany. I still was like, wow, like it, it's just, you really like do have to make a name for yourself yeah. and then it helps to go over after that. Yeah. I had no, like I had no college. I mean, college, you could say I was there for like three weeks. I had three weeks of college, college training. Yeah. I had no, you know, experience besides high school and club. So I, I don't think I would have, you know, I think I would have, you know, failed in my opinion mm-hmm. if I would have went to England. I don't think I would have been ready. Okay, so then, so preseason with the Roughnecks. Preseason with the Roughnecks. So, so you just, you come in, you're 18 at this point, right? 19. 19. It was 19 at this point. How'd it go? Uh, preseason. I was, Ivan, was Ivan Mirkovich there? Yeah. Already in preseason? There. Okay. Ivan was there. Uh, preseason was a hell of a ride for me, to be honest. Um, I learned a lot about myself, you know, a lot about, you know, what it actually takes, because I got there preseason. I did well, actually. I mean, I did well. Practices started. I mean, I was just, I wasn't like nothing special, you know, nothing crazy. So, I mean, I just practiced with them for like the first month. And it was, I mean, it was cool, you know. It was a cool experience. I remember there'd be practices where the coach would like get into my ass and like, <laughs> about how dribbling, all this. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, it was like, that was crazy to me because like, I've never been told, like, I'm like, I love dribbling and like, yeah. I've never been told like, like they were screaming at me like, Mm-hmm. Like it was crazy, but yeah, because you're you're honestly the type of person who gets the ball and could go on those fifty yeah, yard runs, runs at people, yeah, and yeah. like you know, I've never played any other thing but you know high school and like to be you know playing at high level dudes, mm-hmm. you know, obviously you know I'm gonna get like either kicked or like you know fouled or take get the ball taken away. Yeah. How was that transition? So you went from 
basically where you were to now playing at, with training with a professional team. Mm-hmm. How was this change with the speed of play and the athleticism and like everything? Yeah, that was you know that was a challenge as well. I mean, it took me like it took me a while to get you know adapt to the speed of play, but you know the coaches really I thought helped. Like Lloyd was really a help to me in my opinion. You know, mm-hmm. even though he would get into my ass, you know, stop dribbling. You know, I remember I remember his voice. <laughs> stop dribbling. <laughs> Just one touch, one yeah. touch, Tiki Taka, and uh, I feel like I adapted well. Uh, we went to play a few preseason games. Actually, I played against Chicago Fire. That was like one of the craziest. Wow. Yeah, so we went to Chicago for one of the preseason games. Played against them. I played against Schweinsteiger. Like <laughs> that was so crazy to me, dude. <coughs> like That's sick. I, that was so sick. Did you touch him like on the field? Yeah, I was like on a corner kick. I remember he talked to me. He was like, uh, "You think he's gonna go short or long?" I was like, "I don't know." And then I like talking to him. He just sprints off. I'm like, "Dude, are you serious?" <laughs> That's sick. But yeah, it was cool. And I did. I actually did well. Like I would say I did well uh-huh. in that game. I I played like right wing. Yeah, and I think I did well. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, he, the feedback, because I always ask for feedback from coaches all the time, you yeah. know. And you know, he said, you know, you did well, you know, you did what you did. And I didn't, lo- I don't think I lost the ball then every time I got the ball. So I think I did well. Yeah. Okay. And then, so preseason was going well. You're adapting to the, the new speed of play, the athleticism, like everything. Because, uh, like, I did that too. Even in every level I went up, because I was like, I like to dribble and mm-hmm. do some stuff. Not as much as you, but I like to dribble. <laughs> and then, like, I would get, even when I go to college or I go to play with the San Jose Earthquakes mm-hmm. or Sac Republic was a big one. They are like, you need to play the ball faster. Like, yeah. I know to get cocked and do the same thing. And, like, but I kind of went up baby steps with it, you know? Really? But, like, it was the same thing because, like, I would always kind of just dribble and dribble and dribble. And then all of a sudden I was going to get up against guys who were just as fast. Yeah, or just faster. As fast. Or then, like... I, I no longer could go into a tackle, bully a guy off, and keep running. It was now going up against the guy who was 215 pounds. Exactly. You know? And like, like that was me for high school. Like I, I thought I walked in there. Oh, I'm gonna dribble everybody. Yeah. I remember like, I think it was Paris actually. He put me on my ass, dude. Paris, <laughs> Paris put me on my ass, dude. Yeah. That's he. Funny. <laughs> I tried to dribble him. I was like, oh, I'm gonna beat this guy. Yeah. Get the ball taken away, and I'm just on my, I'm on my face, dirt in my face. And it, was just, it was just bad. And then so so you did preseason. You played against Chicago Fire. Did, did you get any other uh, any other preseason games? Oh, I'm trying to remember. Oh, I played against ORU here. Uh-huh. Did well. I'm trying to remember. I think that's all I can remember. Those two games. Yeah. And then so, what was the next step after that? Uh, see, uh. So I trained preseason, and he basically told me, you know, I I remember he told me he was like they were going to sign me on like a training contract kind mm-hmm. of and that never happened and you know I was getting frustrated I'm like you know if you're going to if you're not going to you know sign me or you're not going to sign me to like a like a training contract and you know I didn't know it, like I needed money and you know I wasn't going to just stay there <laughs> yeah. forever but uh, I told him uh, I told Lloyd actually and he was just telling me you know just maybe get a side job because I, I told him I, I was going to need you know a few days off just because Cause he was telling me to come each and every day, each and every day, and I was like, you know, I need, I need income. So I was, gonna t- I was gonna tell him if I can get a job, maybe on the side, miss a few days, like t- set a schedule with him, basically, you know, maybe work Monday, Tuesday, and then train with him Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, yeah, something like that. And basically, by the grace of God, it was so. This was January, February, March, April. April, May, I want to say. So I was been training with him for like almost two and a half months. Uh-huh. And uh, Barry Williams, the new owner right now, uh, he's, he, was a, he was a mentor to me, you know, back then. Or like at that time. And he yeah. was telling me, you know, because what, I, what uh, the coach was telling me is that, you know, you don't have money right now. That's what, you know, a lot of coaches say. <laughs> yeah. They're going to BS you, basically. And Barry was like, you know, was really pushing for me to get signed mm-hmm. and then you know it finally came through and I finally got signed and that that was you know a blessing to me okay so I think I think the microphone cut out for for a little bit of that but you signed your first pro contract with Tulsa mm-hmm. it was probably a sick feeling sick feeling <laughs> sick to see my name on the back of a jersey like yeah that. It was yeah. crazy. Um, what was like the reaction with your family, your mom, your 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 friends, everybody? Because you were like a homegrown like Tulsa, Tulsa, Tulsa Tolson, right? That's what you yeah. say, Tolson, Tolson. But uh, you know, 
my mom was she told me you know she was sad throughout those months that i was just you know working wasn't really doing anything and you know she was she was you know she's always gonna be proud of me regardless of what i do and so when i finally told her and you know i got signed she was you know she was super duper happy and yeah she was uh i remember i called her and she was crying she was like you know this is this is a blessing yeah and we just had a long conversation on the phone she was crying it was you know you know how moms are <laughs> yeah but uh that's awesome yeah. i know my, my mom you know it's funny my mom cried when i signed it with tulsa here. really because i went through like going down into new zealand and like like you know obviously going mm. from the usl down to a semi-pro league and then like I got a lot of a lot of shit from everybody, yeah. and then like she's just same thing. Mom's <laughs> that's that's the best feeling though. Yeah, like, yeah, it's the best feeling. Yeah, it's cool. And I bet like it's the same thing because you you know you went from university. I'm sure if people didn't say it, but people probably thought it when you turned down going to University of Central Arkansas to go home and work and train on your own. I bet there's a lot of people thinking, if not saying it, that like, what are you doing? Yeah, you, know? I, you don't know how many times I've been to you know called stupid or like you're an idiot. Like, yeah. And it's crazy because it's not it's it's the people that don't play soccer that are telling me that. Yeah. And then like now, whenever I talk to soccer people, they're like, you know, you're smart for what you did, mm -hmm. and you know, but it's the people that you know didn't play soccer like you're an idiot. Like why'd you do that? Yeah. Because I think for I think college soccer is it. it people always say like, is it a good route? Like you know, mm -hmm. people bash on it and hate on it because it takes four years from 18 to 22 of prime yeah. professional age. Of and you're going on only playing in a three month season yeah. and you're doing all this and you're doing school and everything, but like I think you have to look at who you are. Like for me, at, at, when I was 18, I wasn't I was not at the level to go and play pro. Like I just wasn't. I needed mm -hmm. to another four years to develop because I was super late with my training, super late with like bloomer everything. But like for you, if you were ready to go into the pro game, then yeah, maybe the four years from 22 like who knows maybe you would have had a, a decent college yeah. career and then never go on a yeah on I mean, who pro. knows you know yeah and so like you have to kind of look at it for your own situation if it's a good good route so all right so you signed the contract when did you get into your first game uh my first game was against orange county we got killed but it was, it was a home like, game right no it was an away game oh i thought it was, a home it was in orange county that was the first time i traveled you know mm -hmm. with the team you know that was a sick experience I mean, we got killed. It was like 4-1 when I came on. And yeah. And we ended up getting killed like 6-1. But, I mean, I did well. Yeah. I didn't lose the ball. Like, that was my main focus was not <laughs> to lose the ball. <laughs> um, how, was, how was your teammates, the, like, being the younger guy? Uh, in, both in the game, in trainings, everything. How was it? How did you take their feedback, criticism, positive and negative and everything? I mean, obviously, I got the most shit out of everybody yeah. just because I'm the youngest. But uh, I took – I tried it because I'm, I'm still – in a learning process yeah. and so everything they said you know i try to take and i try to learn mm -hmm. just because i'm not you know i'm not anywhere you know close to where i want to be you know as a player and so anything you know anything i get even till now i'll just take it you know even if it's bad yeah i'll i won't say nothing you know i'm not the type of person you know if you say something like shitty to me i'm not gonna you know cuss back at you i'm just gonna be like okay yeah yeah so that's all, that's keep all. on you know with myself but uh we had a lot of older players like last year yeah, with, with a lot of team. experience, yeah. and so uh, a lot of them, you know, really helped me. I thought mm -hmm. really helped me. I mean, there was those one or two guys that were just you know just a dick, but a lot of them, you know, I I would tell them, you know, I'm in a learning pro I, like I would tell them I'm in a learning process. Please, you know, if I'm not doing something right, just tell me. Yeah, you know, don't be a dick about it. And, and a lot of them helped me. So yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, and then so travel the team to Orange County. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that was the first game that you got into. Got into. What minute? Do you remember what minute you got into the game? They have a nice stadium, huh? Oh, their stadium is beautiful. Yeah. And it was perfect weather, too. It was like yeah. 70, 60. Oh, wait, every single day is like that. Yeah. Was, you, what, what time was the game? Is it a night game? Uh, it was a night game. Isn't that the weather the best to play in? It's like perfect. cool, crisp, no humidity. Like It was perfect. Yeah. All right, so you get in the game. How was it? Uh... You said you didn't lose the ball. I didn't lose the ball. That was my main, like, <laughs> that was my main focus. I did not want to lose the ball once. Yeah. But, I mean... It was, you know, I was holding back a lot because I just didn't want to, I didn't want to lose the ball. And so, uh, I remember it was 4-1. Mm -hmm. And then we just got, I don't know, the team, like, I couldn't, that's a whole other story too. But the team, we just got killed. And, you know, they still, even though we got killed, you know, they still told me I did well, you know. Yeah, yeah. 
So individually but, did well, especially yeah, the first game. It was a good experience. I mean, it was my first professional game. I could tell the level was different because I would like pass the ball and they would like yell at me to sprint on and yeah. you know, I was just like I didn't know what I was doing kind of. And so <laughs> but it was cool. Were you nervous? I was so nervous. You don't understand. I was so nervous. My palms were sweaty. I was just, yeah. I was super nervous. Did they tell you beforehand that you were probably going to no, get the game? No, he didn't tell me at all. Yeah. I just, I think uh, Anthony's here. Do you want to let Anthony? I just assumed, I was like, oh, I'm probably not going to go. That's my first game. I'm in, I'm in the, you know, the bench. Yeah. And then I remember I was on the corner. I was on the corner warming up and he's like, DJ, come. And I start running. I'm like, what is he, what is he talking about? You want me to get the water or something? He's like, you're going on. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. That's, that's sick. And so you were, you were super nervous to start. Um, how, after the game, were you, at, right when you got the first ball? Because like for me, I, even my first pro game, my first everything, um, I'm always like super nervous. And then, and then it, as soon as I get the first touch, it like calms down a little bit. Was that, yeah. was that how it was like Yeah, yeah. actually, I remember the first touch. I was like, I was making a run. They passed it to me. Touched it. I was like, "Whoa!" I'm playing. Like I looked. Like it was. It was just you know a dream come true, and I just played the ball back. But I mean, it was like you know I was getting more comfortable into the game. I feel yeah. like if I had more time, would have been you know more, much more on the ball. But you know those first few touches, you just want to make sure you know they're there's Simple. good safe balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to take the ball and try and go on a fifty. Yeah, right exactly. Way. Yeah, you got to get the flow of it. Yeah. Um, so then you went. Then did you come back home? And when did you make your first appearance? Like in Tulsa at home. When did I make my first appearance at Tulsa? Hmm. Do you remember what game it was? I don't remember. Do you remember anything about it? Do you remember like was your was your mom your mom was? In oh the yeah, stands, my eh? family was. My mom's always at every single game, That's even cool. if I'm on the bench or not. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I think it was. It wasn't St. Louis, was it? No. Actually, okay, so I remember the game now. It was Colorado. No, it wasn't Colorado. Damn it! I don't remember what game it was. <laughs> it's okay. But I mean, I remember my first start. Like that was crazy to me uh -huh. too. But I don't, I don't remember my first game actually. Huh. So, uh, but that's crazy that story. So we go to Orange County. We come back that Monday. So that game was on a Saturday. That that Monday, the coach gets fired. Yeah. <laughs> that that was so crazy to me. Uh huh. The coach gets fired. Uh, Michael Antian takes over, mm -hmm. and it's just you know, it's a it's another that's a big transition as well because it's a whole you know. Whole new coach, whole new coaching staff, and you know. But uh, Mike coached me when I was like 14, club mm -hmm. for TSC, and so you know I kind of felt more comfortable, even though he was harder on me. But I, I felt more comfortable. So that transition for me wasn't as hard as you know other players. You yeah. know, I could tell other players you know weren't you know happy, but that transition me for me was you know it was decent. So. Yeah, that's that's good. And then so how did the rest of the season go on? Uh, actually, for the rest of the season, I was either on the every every like time we had a game, I was on the bench. Mm -hmm. So, and I either made I think I made an appearance for every time I was on the bench too. So it wasn't it wasn't too bad. It, whether it was fifteen minutes, you know, yeah, forty five. I, I started two games actually, and it was it was pretty two cool. Two games, yeah. Going out with the the starting line. Yeah, the giant that thumb. was sick. Dude. <laughs> that was sick. <laughs> That's really cool. That's that's so exciting. I, it makes me like go back and remember the same, Your first like time? my first starts with Orange County or over in Germany and everything. Um, but yeah, that's that's awesome. Okay, and then so then I think I came very end of the season because mm -hmm. I watched you guys play in Portland. Mm -hmm. um, I watched you guys get your butts get kicked in Portland. Bus. It was like five zero, five one, four. I think it was four oh. zero. Yeah, uh, and then. I, I flew over to Ivan's place and I trained with you guys for the rest of the season, which was good. I, you know, met Mike and yeah. obviously it worked out when I was yeah. there. Um, so then from off season, what did you do this whole off season? Everything? This whole, I mean, I went to Guatemala. Yeah. Uh, then after that, I came back, was training at Titan yeah. a lot of the time. Uh, just, gym. Just the normal stuff as just always. Just normal Training, stuff. working yeah. out, doing it. And then so now we're starting, this is just your second pro season now. It's like, this is going to probably, this is going to be my first full season because yeah. last season you know was half midway through this is gonna be my first professional season ever so i consider this year one kind of yeah but you're but, not a rookie though no i'm not i'm not a rookie. <laughs> not a rookie not a rookie and how's this season going how do you think like this year has differed for the better or for the worse from your first rookie season uh just because you know last year a lot of the players you know it was, it was complicated last year. Complicated team last year. Like, three yeah. players, you know, got their contracts terminated or left. Yeah. And, you know, it was just, you know. Interesting Yeah, dynamic. it was interesting dynamics. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, so far preseason's been really fun. It's been today it's was intense. today was killer. Today bro. we did the beep test this morning. Mm-hmm. We did the beep test. Anthony just walked in. Anthony just signed for Tulsa as well, right? Yeah, what's up? I can say it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one will go out later too, and the, nobody listens to this anyway. <laughs> um, do do? There, was, there was actually well, f- quite quite a few people listen to this. But Anthony's just sitting here. We're about to make dinner um, here soon. But now I'm gonna ask you. Just some like questions about like your like just like your thoughts about a okay. training career everything. So if you could go back right now and go back to yourself at fifteen sixteen, what would you what would you piece of advice would you give yourself? What would you do differently or anything? Uh, uh, I think I would have trained harder, trained harder, and but then that Casey, you know, I would have hopped on that much more quicker than I did that time but yeah I mean just take risks basically yeah even going back to your first professional season now do you have anything that like you want to do differently this season than last season yeah uh, I want to put you know I want to yeah like take more risk because last season I feel like you know a lot of people were telling me you know holding back don't be scared yeah you know so this was you know this season I want to you know go all out you know so do you feel more comfortable even at these trainings than you did last year? Oh, yeah. Much more comfortable. Isn't it crazy the difference Much between your rookie year and the yes. second year? Like, I remember at Orange County, even from Orange County to St. Louis, is huge. And then from St. Louis to, well, New Zealand, it was I was at a lower level. Mm-hmm. So that was even bigger. But even from St. Louis to now at mm-hmm. Tulsa, it's just every single year, it's just, it gets, you feel so much yes. more calm. It's easier. The game slows down. Everything is just crazy. Last year, I was, like, so on edge about everything yeah. I did. It was, it like, was crazy. Something I always think about, too, is, like, you are 20 years old right now. Mm-hmm. Imagine yourself three years ago or two years ago at 17, 18, and the difference of the player you were then to now. Mm-hmm. And then imagine another, like, two or three years in the future with the same progression. Yeah. And another, and you're so young, too. Another two or three years and another two or three years. Like, it's crazy. That's really crazy. All right. Um, and then, so... You play, I didn't even say, but you play like left wing, right wing mainly mm-hmm. is your position. Left wing, right wing. Um, and then so, did you score? You didn't score last year, huh? I got two assists last two year. Two assists, yeah. yeah. And then so, what are your goals for this season? Uh, score goals, get assists. Very, very, very specific. Just, I like it. <laughs> just mess shit up, basically. <laughs> That's good. And then so, now in looking to the, towards the future, like... Obviously, you're in the USL. This is your second year in the USL. Mm-hmm. What are your goals looking forward to, like, the rest of your career? Uh, I want to be the best I could be, you know. I want to be the best I could be mm-hmm. as a player. I want to go the highest I can, you know. I'm not going to, you know, hold anything back. I just want to, you know, be the best person I could be on and off the field. Mm-hmm. You know, grow up because, you know, not having, because I, I don't know, I, don't, I haven't told you, but I don't have, like, a dad in my life. So, yeah. you know, I just want to be, you know, the best man I could be for my mom, you know. That's that's why I mainly, you know, want to do this for my mom. That's she, cool. She, she suffered a lot, you know, going, you know, me leaving college and mm-hmm. and stuff. And so, you know, I just want to get her that house, you know. <laughs> I want to buy her that house. Did anybody, did anybody that was at Central Arkansas hit you up when you signed for Tulsa? Or uh, my or roommate. Yeah. I still, yeah, I still keep in contact with him. That's cool. He's super cool. Is he still at Arkansas now? Uh, he's actually trying to play pro now. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he was supposed to be a junior, uh-huh. but I don't know if he's you know going back to UC. I think he's gonna go overseas or something like that, like okay. Sweden or something. Do you have any Do you have any interest of looking overseas? Dude, I'll go anywhere. Yeah, that's I'll that's go pretty anywhere. much every. That's yeah. like every pro is like I'll go anywhere. If like I'll go follow. anywhere, dude. With okay, if you could have, and it's so hard because I get this question a lot, but if you had similar opportunities in the u.s again for next year or over in europe or elsewhere would you prefer to stay home and play for your family or you it's really it just comes down to the opportunity uh it comes down to the opportunity to me you know my mom i'm always gonna have before i make any decision i'm gonna always gonna you know talk to my mom about it Mm -hmm. and you know just pray about it basically my mom she's a big part of it and so i I, met your mom the other night oh yeah you did huh yeah she's really cool yeah, it was awesome. You know my whole family, dude. My <laughs> family was here. <laughs> at the meeting greet at the meeting greet that we went to, it was like, Yeah, it's my cousin. Because they just came down the line and we'd sign up. Like, like, Yeah, that's my cousin. Yeah, that's my uncle. Yeah, he's a cousin. And I'm like, is this whole line your cousin your cousins? And you're like, Yeah, honestly, pretty much. Yeah. That's that's cool. It's really cool that you can have like your professional seasons and everything at home. Yeah. Like I think that's so sick. Like when that's I such went a back, confidence booster too, because yeah. you know, to know your family's up in the stands. And when I went back play. to Portland, it was so much fun to play in Portland really? in front of friends and family. Yeah, I've only done that once my whole career. 
just played in Portland once, yeah. So hopefully this year, this year I can get into a game or travel to Portland. That's what I'm really hoping for. Um, now, next question I want to ask is, why do you think that you made it pro based off, uh, versus other kids that you that grew up with, trained with, everything? That's a good question. Uh, honestly. You can toot your own horn, man. You can nah, brag a little. I mean, you can do I'm a little humble brag. brag. But um, I think it was just you know hard work. Like I stayed consistently coming to practice. I think part of it, I think my main thing is I adapted really well. Mm -hmm. From, you know, going to playing high school to playing, to, you know, playing professional, I think I adapted really well. Because a lot of people, that's that's the main thing is that, you know, they don't adapt well. And so, you know, they get told, you know, you know you're not good enough or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I think that was my main, you know, that's what, that's what I was really good at. I adapted really well at the speed of play, you know. And I think that's what made the difference, in my opinion. All right, sweet. Um, Mimi, you got any questions for DJ that you should answer? <laughs> Mimi does this every single podcast. <laughs> She's going to think of the she hardest just, question no, ever. No, she just watched. sits and, just, and she'll just be quiet. And then I'm just, the whole podcast is just like silence right now. Nothing? Yeah. Um, what was your honest impression of Matt when you met him? When I first met him? Like, compared oh, that's to a good what question. So I don't know if you guys can hear Mimi in the background, but she said, what was DJ's honest first impression about me? Like, it wasn't different than what you expected. No. I mean, he's a, he's a cool dude, you know? And, uh, like, when I first met him, I just didn't, you know, like, I didn't want to mess up. I didn't want to do anything. I was just like, I want to think this dude, I want to, like, show this dude that I can play. And so <laughs> I, remember, I remember walking into the trainer's room, and I didn't even say hi to you, dude. I, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> I was so scared to come up to him. I was like, I don't want to, I just, I'm just going to ignore him. And then I, I went outside. told me that he thought you didn't I did. Really? I, I said, this DJ guy hates me. Really? <laughs> well, because I told you the first day, like, I went and I walked in the training room and I saw Chris, uh, Christian. Mm -hmm. And so I said hi to him. He was like, oh, I watched your video. He was, like, super the opposite of yeah, you. Yeah, because he's the opposite of me. He, I'm he a was, super like, shy person. Yeah, he first. was, like, super enthusiastic about my videos and everything. So I was like, oh, awesome. And then, like, everybody else was like, yeah, yeah, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It was cool. And then you came in. And, like, I, a lot of times, like, so if someone comes in, I'll, like, try to make eye contact or, like, you know, shake their hand or something. <laughs> the awkward eye contact. And, like, you came in and just didn't look at me. I'm like, oh, whatever. <laughs> and then, so I, like, continued foam rolling. And then um, and then out at the field, then we started passing. Mm -hmm. And then, I, like I said in this, you're like, yeah, I know who you are. I know who you are. You it said sounded it like kind of creepy, dude. Yeah, you said it like I was like, I felt like you were like, oh, yeah, I watch your videos. Like, who do you think you are? <laughs> like, that's what I thought. And then it's funny because then once I found out that you watched my videos and, and you said that you DM me and then Christian, you guys, you said, and Christian said the same thing that you get nervous about that you wanted to show that you can play. Yeah, yeah. But I get but so nervous. Like, yeah, I said. get so nervous because I'm like, I need to show these guys that I'm actually a good player. I, the worst thing for me is I think about is going out on the field and then you see me and be like, well, this guy's trash. Like, <laughs> this guy sucks. Yeah, actually, when I posted, I think I posted a picture of you on my Snapchat and a lot of my friends were like, they slid up. They're like, dude, is that is that Matt Sheldon? I'm like, yes, dude, chill out. <laughs> He's like, is he really good? I'm like, yes, chill out. That's, that's like, he, is he weird in yes, honestly, yes, <laughs> he is. Nerdy? He's a nerd. He's for yeah. sure a nerd. <laughs> uh, but he cracks me up, though. I'm not going to lie. I'll be, and I uh, have a lot better dance moves than you thought. Uh, so. Yeah, we'll see about that. He's been practicing. I have. I've been practicing like, here. Everyone on this team was, is so good at dancing. It's, <laughs> he, like, practices. Yeah, well, I'm like the only white guy on the team, so it's hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got to get that rhythm, man. I uh, know. Yeah, I'll learn it. All right, but this has been DJ Dean. This is the Against All Odds podcast. DJ, thanks for coming and sharing your story. Yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, how was it? How's your first podcast experience? I'm still sweating, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I right, dude, you made it. It's like been like forty five minutes really? or so. Yeah. Well, this says forty minutes, but it stopped like for like a few minutes. But yeah, it's been pretty All decent right. time. It's been an honor, man. <laughs> it's crazy because like you know, just you know, play. Like I was talking to my girlfriend about this actually. You know, I've been watching you for like four years. Like how long? it's been like four three years. Yeah, I've been. Yeah. And so like you know, be playing with you now is just it's ridiculous, bro. You don't understand. Yeah, we we did about this too. It's crazy. I you know what's funny is I did the same thing. Um, like I s something similar happened to me. Because uh, I was watching the Portland Timbers before they were an MLS team when they were a USL mm. team. One of my favorite players on the team that I would watch was Rodrigo Lopez. This guy, really good center mid for the Portland Timbers. And I would watch him and do all this stuff. And then um, and then when I went to Sacramento, and I got like his signature like on a ball really? and everything. I was like, and I have it up in my room. And then when I went to Sacramento Republic, he was there. And I was like, oh, that's crazy. Oh, this is the guy. I got. Like I, I was like, I was like, mom, take a picture of the ball. No, you're thinking Valeri. That's different. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I know Valeria. Nice 
<laughs> um, we but yeah, it's 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 funny. It's we cool. Like, we both look each other. So whenever we see a guy that's like in really good shape or like a nice body, like he's always checking him out too. Yeah. So we both look to Thanks. each other. Yeah. And then he's like, he's a soccer player. Like, sure. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> no, yeah, just expose me on my video. Exposing you. <laughs> All right, cool. So we're gonna make dinner now. I'm gonna make dinner for DJ Anthony. Oh, what are you making? Well, first I'm gonna make pasta and then protein pancakes too. I'm yeah, I got pasta. protein pancakes. I got protein pasta, too. Oh, my God. That was so much fun. All right. I need to stop this podcast. We've been rambling on now. All right. This is the Against All Odds podcast. DJ's, all his stuff will be in the description. Go follow him. Go check him out. DJ, anything, anything else? Mm-mm. Peace right. out. Oh, yeah. Peace out, guys. See you in the next one. Mm-hmm.